Daily Dosers, happy Monday to you. Man, I'm glad you're joining us. I don't know about you, but I'm so fired up about this new series about David and really taking a biblical look at stories. If you grew up in church, maybe a lot of us knew and understand, oh yeah, David, but to really catch it with adult eyes, fresh eyes, the way scripture has presented them, man, this is gonna be a lot of fun. One of the things we looked at this weekend though, and if you didn't watch it, oh man, it's David and Goliath. And I know you're going, oh, I'm glad I missed it. I know the story. We saw David and Goliath, maybe for a lot of us, differently than we normally did. We saw it for what the text was screaming out. Here's what the text is trying to give us to hold on to on this story. And the main foundation of the entire story of David and Goliath was about, that's right, honoring God, honoring God. Uh, it's a whole chapter about a giant and an army that dishonors God, that mocks God, that defies God, that constantly is in a field for 40 days and 40 nights calling out a living God in his army. It's about an army that's frozen in fear because oh, they're caught up in the external appearances. And it's about the introduction of David onto the battlefield that says, does anyone not understand this is a living God? This guy's defying and mocking a living God. And we watch that run through the entire chapter that God is looking for hearts that want to honor him. And that was one of our main takeaways and our main points. How do we honor him? Do we look at our past and do we say, this is what I've done? Or do we look at our past and say, man, this is what God has done? Do we look at today and say that I'm part of a living God walking with him? Then if so, how do I honor God? And let me give you one of the main keys. We honor and dishonor God. In fact, that's what's happening right now. I'm using this little thing, the tongue. Our speech gives us away more than anything else. I love the book of James. Um, when I talk to brand new Christians who go, where should I start reading the Bible? I usually give them the book of Mark and I usually give them the book of James. Mark is the easiest reading um, of, all of, the, uh, of all the gospels of Jesus and James is the easiest book to follow. He's the half brother of Jesus. He's a leader of a church in Jerusalem and James gives some great stuff. But as soon as James gets a little heady, he goes, let me tell you a story or let me give you an illustration. And this is what he does in chapter three of James, starting at verse two. Hey, we all stumble in many ways. Look, I'm, I'm not saying that we're all gonna be perfect people. We all stumble in many ways, but let's talk about the ways we stumble. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect person, able to keep their entire body in check. You see, you can put a little bit into the mouth of horses and you can make them obey us. We can turn the entire animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. He goes, you, you, let's talk about something. You want to steer a giant horse? What do you do? You put a little bit in his mouth. You pull the left rein, right rein, and he goes that way. A giant ship has what? A tiny little rudder in the back. Likewise, your tongue is just a very small part of your body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by just a small little spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person. It sets the whole course of your life on fire, and it itself is set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, creatures of the sea are being tamed, and they have been tamed, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. You see, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who have been made in his likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praising and cursing. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water come from the same spring? My brothers, my sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by the deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. We ended the message this weekend on being men and women that say, okay, daily what God wants is a heart that honors him. How do I honor God? First and foremost, you want to honor God. We've got to keep a tight rein on this. We've got to be people that understand, man, with the same mouth that I praise God on the weekends, the same mouth I just rip people on the week. How do I talk about my employer or my employee? How do I talk about my enemy? How do I talk about those that I work with or work for me? How do I talk about those in school, in the barracks? How do I talk about those? I mean, the list goes on and on. And James, the brother of Jesus, goes, well, cool. you can't be praising God with that on Sunday and using that for the other five, six days like this. He goes, brothers and sisters, that's not honoring to God. May we be people that start this week, maybe even just Monday. Who can tame it? No one. And that's why we come back to serving a living God. God, may you take the power of my tongue. 
May you use it for good, not evil. May you give me a tight ring on it. May I be short, God, to ask for forgiveness, to apologize when I misuse it. But with this, may I choose to honor you. And may I choose, more importantly, never to dishonor you with how I use my tongue, especially towards people that are created in your likeness. Wow, that's a lot for a Monday. And that's our daily dose.